Okay. <clears throat> no one loses their healing. There isn't some thing, quote, healing, unquote, that mystically oozes out of the person praying and attaches itself to the sick person, causing them to be healed as long as they have this thing, quote, healing, unquote, and keep that thing that then mysteriously leaves them, causing them to be sick again. It isn't as if the sick person is perpetually cursed with a particular sickness, and this thing, quote, healing, unquote, temporarily alleviates that curse as long as they can, quote, keep their healing, unquote. They were either healed or they weren't. If they were healed, then what happened was that they got afflicted again, most likely in the same way they got sick in the previous time. If someone in the natural catches a cold and in the natural gets over it in a couple of weeks, then six months later finds themselves with a cold again, they don't say, I lost my healing. They say, I caught another cold. If someone is doing some risky athletic activity and breaks their arm, goes to the doctor, gets the bone set and a cast put on, and so on, and then the bone is healed, again in the natural, and they go back to the same risky athletic activity and break the same arm again in the same place, they don't say, I lost my healing. They say, I broke my arm again. It is the same way in the spiritual, with miraculous healings. We have perishable, mortal, corruptible bodies, per 1 Corinthians 15. There is always the opportunity to get physically sick or afflicted with demonic affliction, depending on how susceptible you make yourself to it. If you miraculously heal a sick person, they can get sick again. You cannot impart to them glorified, imperishable, immortal bodies. Only Jesus will do that at the resurrection, when he returns, like it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 42-57. You healed them. Congratulations. That's all you could do in the moment. Now you must disciple them to appropriate the knowledge and faith necessary to stay healthy on their own without you standing over them ready to perform another miracle, and disciple them so that they can even heal others they meet, as you do, after which the same scenario will apply. Here's another thought-provoking question. Did any of the people Jesus healed get sick again? What does the Bible say about that? Nothing. In fact, the Bible doesn't say that they didn't get sick again. In fact, we actually know the answer without the Bible. They all, sooner or later, got sick again and died of something. You can't die without dying of something going wrong in your body. If Jesus had imparted perpetual quote, healing, unquote, then all those thousands of people whom Jesus healed would, by definition, still be alive today. And they would be sharing testimonies of what Jesus did for them, healing them once and for all, 2,000 years ago, from head to toe, so that they would never get sick again. So, you see, you could say that all the people that Jesus healed, quote, lost their healing. Unquote, and died. It is as simple as that. Telling people what to do if something, anything, threatens to afflict their body is part of discipleship. This isn't magic. You can have faith for them and get them healed on your faith. But what happens when you are gone? That is why healing is not the end all but rather we communicate the full gospel and revelation of Jesus Christ. For those of you who fret about people that you healed, quote, losing their healing, unquote, 
you have to get rid of a bit of stinking thinking. It is going to be for you, so be it unto you according to your faith. If you expect sicknesses to come back quickly, then it is also the case that they will. A broken bone miraculously healed isn't going to break again on its own. But in my personal experience, I'd guess that roughly 75% of physical illnesses that I see out there have some demonic component to them. It is very easy for an afflicting demon to come back if everyone accepts and expects it to by their faith. Demons are listening to what you say and assessing your resolve. When you evict a demon, it must go. And it must stay away if you say so and expect it to. But if you developed a reputation for resigning to the prospect of it coming back, it will. Also, your word is not of greater authority than that of whoever is afflicted. They can invite the demon back, and quickly, either explicitly or implicitly, by their own foolish faith declarations for sickness and the power of their tongues. That is, again, why discipleship is so important. You must saturate them with the same mindset of dominion in Christ over demons and all affliction, which in part you impart, figuratively speaking, through your own confidence, and also by encouragement and instruction through your words to them.